Good evening, everyone. A few weeks ago, I bought a Ferrari. Now, why buy a Ferrari when you've quite publicly stated that you don't like the company? Well, because I like the cars and I miss not driving the cars. But really, this is about value. You see, 599 prices in the UK have dipped sharply in the past six months, and I just thought it looked like a good punt. I mean, an early car like this is only about £15,000 more than the best 575 Maranello. Now, don't get me wrong, the 575 is a lovely old thing, but the 599 is on a completely different planet. This is a fully fledged supercar. It has a 620 horsepower normally aspirated V12 with 448 foot-pounds of torque and it weighs 1750 kilograms. The front brakes are 398 millimeter carbon ceramics and the rear tires are 305 section Pirellis. It's also a GT car that will hit 100 miles an hour in seven and a half seconds, do over 200 miles an hour and to me looks the absolute business in Grigio Silverstone. It also uses fuel like nothing I've ever owned. I think there's a hole in the fuel tank. But what's it like to actually drive this 599? Pretty spectacular actually, I have to say. I'm a lucky swine in that I get to drive lots of nice cars on a daily basis, but this thing, every time I get into it, I think, wow. I really do think, wow. But I also think, at full noise, in second gear, when it's right lit, I think to myself, it's got 620 horsepower, and yet the car that's just replaced it and made this, the old Ferrari, has got another, what, 120 horsepower? And you do think to yourself, what does that mean on the road? How can you possibly use it? Because I can't use eight tenths of the performance of this car most of the time. Anyhow, I am a journalist and I have to state on the record that you probably never can have too much power when you're in a supercar because that's what they're all about. And this is a supercar and I quite like owning supercars. I wouldn't say it's an easy car to drive slowly either. Um, the old flappy paddle gearbox is not to my liking, I have to say. Although this one isn't annoying me as much as I thought it might. At low speed, you have to sort of just manage the throttle a bit and watch out for the odd creep from junctions and just, it's not as you want it. I'd love to have bought a car with a stick, but in the UK, apparently none were delivered. And that meant going down the route of buying one maybe in Germany and shipping it over here. And I just got a bit scared and thought I'd never be able to sell it one day. So I'm with paddles. Once you're up and running, they are dead impressive and the shift is fast. And actually, you do get into a groove just having your hands on the wheel and the efficiency of not having to move around. But I don't know, there are maybe four or five important components of driving a car. And not having three pedals and a gear shift to wrestle with, I feel I'm being denied that percentage of the driving experience. Maybe I'm an old bastard, but I feel it's quite important and I miss it. Ride's pretty good. I have to say I'd like to have a soft damper setting with the fast gear change and you can't separate that. You had to have a scooter here or a 458 for them to start doing that. You must have a button under there to be able to sort of override the function. But other than that, my biggest problem here is how am I going to avoid doing too many miles in it and making it worth about 20 pence at the end of my ownership? It's a pretty good problem to have though, isn't it? And of course, when you switch all the stuff off, you can do this. It's just lunacy. So I'll drive it a bit quicker now and um, I'll try and tell you what it's like to drive this car quite quickly. Second gear, almost can't use it in the UK fully open because it's got so much poke. I've got shift lights on the steering wheel which are quite helpful because you can't look down at the rev counter when you're on big car but steering is accurate so I can get it where I want it to be. Listen to that noise. Oh yes. It's very neutral and it's strange, even though your head tells you this is a front engine car, it doesn't feel that way because it's got so much traction when you just feed the power in. If you smash the throttle open, yeah, it's a problem, it'll just spool up. But if you feed it in, it's got loads of traction and feels really well balanced. 
it's a physically big car for the roads that I drive it on, certainly. It's much bigger than I expected it to be. It feels kind of Murcielago wide. The F12 is, is a smaller car, and I think that's a, a really clever development. The weight, over 1,700 kilograms, I don't feel it that much because the car's so agile. Um, I've got lots of Manatino settings down here to go from normal to sport to race, but really when it comes down to it, it's about dropping a gear and overtaking stuff. Oh yes, it's just awesome. The motor, it's smooth, it's responsive, but most of all, in my head, it's a detuned Enzo engine for the same money as a new 991 Porsche. That has to make it the bargain of the century, doesn't it? So for my money, this is the best value supercar on sale right now. It isn't as pure as the RS, but it's something totally different. And that's what I want from car ownership, as many different experiences as possible.